This is a guide for my Raspberry Pi Pico guitar conversion kit for Clone Hero, Guitar Hero World Tour Definitive Edition, Rock Band 4, etc, etc. This guide assumes you have some basic soldering experience under your belt. If you don't, I highly recommend you pick up a basic soldering station from Amazon, along with some flux and solder. I highly recommend that you get some perf board and practice your soldering before you do it here just to avoid mistakes. That said, here's a couple other things you'll need to work with this kit. You'll need a pair of flush cutters like this. Uh, this was a couple bucks at the hardware store. You can get it on Amazon for pretty cheap as well. We need it to modify the shell and clip some wires. Speaking of wires, you also need a wire stripper. This is a really cheap one. I don't like using these, so I would not recommend them. I'd recommend something more along the lines of this. Uh, this is kind of an in-between. It's not too expensive, not cheap either, but it does the job very well, and I like them a lot. I do also have a kind of a big boy pair of wire strippers that automatically strip away the wire. Uh, you don't need these, but these are really nice to have because you can see with that action right there, they separate the wires automatically. Also included in the kit is the Raspberry Pi Pico with the pre-soldered headers. Save us a lot of soldering time uh, versus going with the normal Pico. Also included is the strum board itself, uh, which the Pico slips right into. Uh, that USB end right there should go towards the right side of the carrier board. You see it slots in there real nice and tight. And next, I'm just going to show you how to solder it to the carrier board. Take your flux, apply it to all the pads on the back end of the carrier board. You'll want to make sure all of them are fluxed up. Then you're going to want to solder each and every one of these pins. I know it's, it's kind of tedious, but it has to be done. Uh, not every single pin is used, but... Uh, every single pin needs to be soldered in order for it to have mechanical strength. You can see that the board over time as I'm soldering these is pushing itself forward um, because I'm pushing on it. So I would recommend if that's a problem for you, just use a piece of tape or something to block the board. I couldn't because I had to film this, but uh, I, I dealt with it. You can also see after I'm done with the row, I go through with a paper towel and some isopropyl alcohol and clean it up. Use a Q-tip as well. All right, now we need to solder the strum board wires, and you can see they're all listed out there, ground through green. Uh, so you're gonna take your wire that is included in the kit and start to split it. Uh, you can do it by hand, it's a little tough. I recommend using a craft knife like this just to slice the ends so it's easier to tear apart. Then you can separate them and use your wire stripper to strip away the wire. Make sure you give yourself enough room to work with. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, wire here. There will be some extra, so don't be afraid to uh, give yourself a lot to work with. Uh, this is 28 gauge wire, but depending on your wire strippers, uh, it might not be that exact size. So just uh, figure out what works best for your wire stripper. And it doesn't have to be the exact same size. You just have to get the actual uh, coating off the wire. Alright, those are all strips. Um, now we have to thread them through the holes in the board, which is really tough to do when they're all stranded like that. So go ahead and uh, twirl them up. Make sure they're nice and straight uh, so we have an easier time inserting them into the holes. And you just start feeding them through the proper holes and then fluxing and soldering them on the back, as you'll see here in a second. You really want to have patience with this part, it is a bit tedious, but uh, doing it slowly and correctly is much better than making mistakes and having to rework it later, especially when it comes to soldering. So, have patience. Then once you've got those all soldered, you want to make sure you remove the excess wire from the back of the board with your flush cutters. And once we're done soldering all those to the board, we want to make sure that that connection stays nice and secure, so flatten all the wires as much as you can against the actual PCB. And then I like to use a hot glue gun, you can also use tape. And then just seal all those wires in there, make a nice layer of hot glue, not too big, uh, but enough to where it can set and then keep all those wires in place and keep all the strain from moving the wires back and forth off of the joint itself and onto the hot glued wire. All right, now we are going to solder the strum switches, the Kale Box navies, onto the carrier board. 
If you look on the bottom, they slot right into place. The pins are lined up nicely with the through holes. And something I like to do to keep them in place and keep them from moving when we're soldering is just take a piece of tape, cover them up, make sure you push down real hard with the tape to keep them in place. Obviously you're going to have to make sure the tape doesn't get in the way of the actual solder joints. Now we'll go ahead and flux up those pin through holes and solder them up just like we did to the wires. And make sure to give those a clean with some IPA and paper towels when you're done. Next step is putting together the fretboard. So go ahead and grab the actual fretboard and the switches, slide them right into place. You should just be able to push them right in. Uh, you'll see here that I slid it in and then use the surface to kind of push it down, slot it into place, put all those into place. Next, you'll want to bend the pins over to the pads as close as you can. So go ahead and just bend them all over. Don't worry if they're not touching exactly. We're going to take care of that in the soldering part next. So now, as we've done before, flux up all the pads, and you're going to want to flood those pretty heavily with solder so it makes a nice solid connection. Just like that, you can see the nice ball of solder right there. Repeat that for each of the frets. Don't hold the soldering iron there for too long, otherwise you might melt the plastic on the bottom of the switch. And you don't want that. All right, now we wanna take these 90 degree header pins that were included in the kit and slot them into each of the holes so they can meet their appropriate pin on each switch. It might be a little bit finicky, but don't worry, I will show you a technique when it gets to the soldering to make this a little bit easier. All right, so I slowed this down to normal speed so you can see what's going on here. I did flux up all of the joints of the pins and the 90 degree headers. So you slowly just wanna Get the iron in there, heat both the pin and the header up, and then you can see I'm kind of pulling up when I'm done applying the actual solder to both the pin and the header. And we'll see this in the next one. I think I did this one even better. So apply the heat, let the flux do its thing, apply the solder to the joint, and it's going to freely rotate, but you just want to pull up on the soldering iron slowly and it should stay into place, and once it solidifies, it's good. Once those are all soldered and cleaned, you wanna go ahead and clip off the little two plastic feet on each switch. Uh, be careful because they do like to fly around when you snip them, so maybe hold your hand over them so they don't go flying everywhere. This is necessary for the fretboard to sit flush in the shell. And now, of course, we have to do the other side, so go ahead and flux up all of those joints and get them soldered up. Don't worry if it's a little cockeyed like that. You see, I kind of moved it in there. Um, these will all shift into place once we actually put it into the neck and get all the frets on it and everything like that. So don't worry about it if it looks like it's a little bit crooked sitting on the fretboard right now. All right, for this next part, you need eye protection because we are clipping off these metal pin headers which like to go flying. So go ahead and you can see what I'm doing there. I'm covering it with my hand as I snip them off so it doesn't fly up at me and my hand catches it. But you definitely wanna be safe and wear eye protection. All right, now we have to solder the other end of those six pin wires to the fretboard. So make sure that you've got the exact same colors going to the exact same spots on the fretboard to the strum board. They're all labeled, so make sure your colors all match. Uh, you can technically solder these to either side of the fretboard but uh, you should really do it from the bottom. Make sure, you, again, you twist them up for an easier time. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to solder these like I'm doing right here. Solder them from the bottom of the fretboard because that makes them sit a lot nicer in the shell. Again, you could do it the other way. It just won't sit as nicely. And once all of those are soldered, go ahead and trim off the excess with your flush cutters. Make sure no points are touching each other, otherwise you're going to have bridging problems. Then once that's done, give it a clean, flip it over to the backside, and make sure these wires are going as straight as possible, 
and give them some hot glue to hold them down and keep them straight. Not too much hot glue here. If you have too much hot glue, it will kind of bubble out into the center there, and we need that to be open for the standoff in the shell and the screws to keep everything down. All right, that's everything we can do without actually opening the guitar, so now we open the guitar. I'm using the Kramer today, but it's pretty much the same for every guitar with some slight variations. You need a T9 security bit to open the Kramer. I started off with a T8 unknowingly and then switched to T9 when I realized that I had the wrong size. So go ahead and use that to unscrew all of the screws in the neck and then we'll pop the fretboard in. All right, once that's open, you can see the pogo pin connector and the fretboard there. Pop the pogo pin connector out. Uh, it'll take some force, but don't be afraid to give it some some elbow grease and pop it out. Same for the fretboard once you got it unscrewed. It's going to take some force to pop it up. These things have been sitting for, what, over 20 years at this point now. Go ahead and pop out the silicone, and we will get this board in. Go ahead and place the board down there. Make sure that the buttons feel good, and then take the screws and washers, pop them in, and then use that to secure the fretboard down to the shell. Make sure you don't over-tighten them. If you start to see the 3D printed washer start to flare up, it's too tight. Give it some slack, and it should fit just fine. All right, once those are in, you can kind of test the frets, see if they feel good. If they do, you can go ahead and tape down the wire. I like to tape it down to keep it out of the way and keep it from rattling inside the shell when you're playing. You can use any old piece of tape. I had some captain tape uh, sitting around, so I just use that, but you can use whatever tape you want. All right, go ahead and set aside the neck assembly and we'll move on to the actual body of the guitar itself. Uh, again, it's all T9 security screws, so go ahead and unscrew all of those. There's a lot of them. There also is a screw beneath the warranty void sticker. Uh, you can go ahead and remove that. I don't think that they'll honor that warranty anymore. I should actually call them and try to see what they'd say, or if that number is even in service anymore. Might be a little fun experiment, but yeah, go ahead and pop that sticker open and unscrew that screw as well. After getting carpal tunnel from all that screwing, open it up, but be careful. A lot of the guitars have connected battery terminals. You're going to have to unscrew that battery terminal board in order to separate them. And now we have the exposed internals of the guitar, and as you can see, mine looks pretty nasty. Uh, I don't know if this would have worked because that capacitor is leaking. So it's a good thing we're converting it because honestly, I'm not even sure it would work if we had the dongle. Parts we want to keep in the shell are the start select buttons and the whammy bar, so I'm going to use my flush cutters to separate those from the actual board. Then we're going to go ahead and unscrew the four corner screws of the main board. You don't need to do the four inner screws because that uh, screws down a plastic housing that covers the strum switches. Go ahead and unscrew all four of those, as well as any external boards that need to come out that are attached to the main board. Pop those out, pop the pogo pin out, and it all comes out like that. You might have to use some force, do not be afraid. And you can see that my strum bar, the actual bar, is looking pretty rusty. So I'm taking all these pieces out and inspecting them, and I can see, yeah, that's real rusty. Even the pad has some rust on it, so we might want to replace that with a foam pad and use some steel wool to scrub off that rust. I didn't clean these parts because this is more of a demonstration, so I'm going to go ahead and pop these back in. Then I'm going to grab the strum board and actually twirl it a couple times so I can coil up the excess wire so it sits nicely off to the side. Uh, you could just run it through the shell however you want, do your cable management however you like to do your cable management. Here I'm going to screw the board down with some washers and screws, uh, just with two, because I want to see how the strum bar feels, see if it needs any adjustment, and uh, after I put this in here, you'll see I'll flip it over, and the strum bar is kind of loose. There's a fair amount of give before you can actually strum it, so we're going to go ahead and fix that real quick. 
One of the easiest ways I've found to fix this is use small strips of duct tape on the bottom of the strum bar where the strum bar meets the switch. Make sure the duct tape doesn't go too far up the strum bar, otherwise it'll show and that'll look tacky. So go ahead and trim off the excess. Make sure you slot it back in, uh, push the board down again, and see if that fixes your problem. In my case, it did. Uh, it, there's only a tiny little bit of give and I'm fine with that, so I'm gonna go ahead and call that good. But if it's still too loose for your taste, then you can of course add more duct tape to that. And we're gonna secure the board back down in place. This time it's so it gives us some stability when we solder the parts on. All right, so now we're gonna strip the wires on the whammy bar so we can attach it to the board. Uh, on these whammy bars, the outer two pins are ground and power. So that's going to be VCC and GND on the carrier board. And the middle pin is going to go to what is labeled ADC on the strum board. So it doesn't matter, ground and VCC can go on either side, it doesn't matter, they're not polarized. Uh, you just have to make sure the middle pin lines up with the middle pin on the strum board. Alright, once those are all soldered, get them cleaned up. Uh, we'll take the board off so we can flip it over and cut off the excess. Again, make sure none of the wires are touching because we don't want any bridging issues. And here I'm going to remove the start select board because the wires are too short to actually reach the board. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off, or take this board off rather, and I'm going to wiggle the wires on the board back and forth until they break off. And I think that's the easiest way to get the wires off the board. So I found these jumper wires laying around that I'm going to use as my longer wires to actually get this connected to the strum board. So I'll cut off each end and strip them. And then we're gonna actually desolder some of the old solder that's on the board right now. You don't have to do this, but it's a good practice to get into. Um, I'm using a solder sucker. So you'll see me apply a little bit of new solder to the iron so I can get the old solder to kind of come off easier. And then I use the solder sucker to remove the solder. Again, technically this is not necessary, but it is good practice and I like to do it. So once those pads are nice and sucked, go ahead and put some flux on there. Uh, and this time we're actually not gonna thread these cables or wires rather through the holes because they're too small. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna solder them flush with the board. I'm not treating these pads like SMD pads, if you know what that is, uh, because it, it would just be too difficult to get these wires, these stranded wires through those holes. So we're gonna carefully solder them directly onto the pad. And once that's all soldered up, you know the drill by now, go ahead and twist those wires up and feed them through uh, to the bottom of the strum board, I would recommend the bottom because it just sits better. But if you are seeing in your guitar that the top would work better, go ahead and do that. Whichever is easiest for you, they work either way. The important thing is you need to look at the board itself and determine which wire is which pin. So you can see on the board it says select SEL, start ST, and ground. The board on the guitar also has those labeled, so just make sure each wire is going to its appropriate pinout. Once those are all soldered up, you can hit both of them with some hot glue to keep them nice and secure. Uh, I can't stress enough how important this is, especially if you're going to be opening your guitar to do more mods. I would definitely hot glue them or at least tape them down to take the strain away from the actual solder joints itself. And of course, once that's done, Secure the start select board back into place, and we're almost done. The next step is a little bit of shell modification. The standoff that is underneath that pesky warranty sticker needs to go. So go ahead and take your flush cutters and cut the standoff in half, and then kind of pry them to each side and they should pop right out. With that out of the way, we can plug in our micro USB cable and it is going to go across the whammy bar. That's totally fine. It shouldn't interfere with the whammy's function at all. Go ahead and put the back plate onto the guitar and make sure it fits nice and flush. Test your whammy bar. Make sure it still works. If it doesn't, that means the cable isn't sitting in the correct place. 
And if everything feels good, go ahead and button up the guitar. Screw in all of these screws on the back plate. Make sure you get the two screws that are underneath the back plate before you put the back plate on. But go ahead and pin her up and then we will go to software configuration. Go ahead and install the guitar configurator from the link in the description and then go ahead and plug your guitar in. If it's the first time you're setting up your guitar, it will show up as a Raspberry Pi Pico. Go ahead and select that, click continue, click start programming, give it a sec, and click start configuring. Uh, if you see a blank screen and there's no guitar here, uh, go ahead and close the guitar configurator and open it again. It should show up this time. Now what we want to do is this one is already set up, uh, but what you would do is you go to each fret, click on change pin binding for green fret, and uh, then click automatically find pin binding because you don't want to go through this manually. Click automatically find pin binding, press the green fret on your guitar, it finds it, click apply changes, and then rinse and repeat for every single button on the guitar, uh, including the whammy bar. And to calibrate the whammy bar, you go ahead and click on the whammy bar, automatically find the pin for the whammy, move it a bit, finds it, click apply, and now we have to write our changes. And after it reconnects, we should be able to see Calibrate Whammy. So now what you want to do is you want to leave your Whammy bar where it is when you're not touching it. Click OK. Now hold it all the way down as far as it'll go. Click OK. Let go again. Click OK. And now you should see it moves up and down when you go back and forth. And that's how you calibrate your whammy. Click right. And that's it. Now you can play. All right, and we're in Game and Clone Hero, and it is working. Uh, so let me know if I didn't cover something or if you have additional questions in the comments below. But I plan to do some more content in the future, some more guides on how to, you know, hardwire the guitar, actually hardwire the shell so it can't pop out anymore accidentally, as well as uh, some more specific guides for other guitar models. But they should all relatively be the same as this one, just with a few minor differences here and there. So, uh, yeah, let me know. And don't tell me I suck at Clone Hero, because I already know. <laughs>